Hi everyone, John Allwine here at Pocket NC. Today I'm going to be showing you the latest features of the simulator. I'm going to start with, we've got a couple extra machines here, the V1 machines. So that should help our longest standing users because it gives the exact extents and speeds and feeds of this machine. Um, and the simulator is great at catching little errors like you've over traveled an axis a little too far, you need to pull out your tool a little bit, and having the correct extents in there can help catch those kinds of errors. So hopefully that'll benefit a number of people. We also improved the performance of the simulator itself. So when you load a program, it should interpret much faster. It should also play back a lot smoother. Both of those will be noticed particularly on underpowered devices such as your phones or tablets. Um, but we definitely wanted to support phones and tablets and we want to encourage their use. So we also improved the integration with our community forums which allows people to upload their G-code programs from their desktops. Most people don't have their G-code programs on their phones or tablets. Um, but if someone uploads it to the forum, which I will do that right now. So we click new topic, give it a title. You can just click the upload button here, select your program, and then optionally you can also upload a model, so I'll do that. We have an OBJ file, which is what we recommend, but an STL file will work fine too. And you create the topic. And now, uh, someone on their phone, or on their desktop, anyone, has this button that they can click, Open Attachments in Pocket NC Simulator. So if you click that, then you'll just be brought to the simulator. It'll interpret automatically. If there's a model, it'll get loaded. Um, and so if someone's on their phone, it might have been hard to upload and or download someone's program and then re-upload to the simulator. But it's really easy to just click that link and then they can help whoever posted or just admire their program. Certainly helps us here at Pocket NC to diagnose issues with G-code programs. Uh, we get a lot of service calls and if people are encouraged to simply upload their g-code to the forum it makes it very easy to help diagnose any issues so in addition we've also added a share button here at the top and there's an, an embed code that you can copy and that can be posted into the forum or so if we edit our post here this is a good demonstration just paste it there and someone doesn't even have to click this link now it's just as they read through the forum they have the simulator here and they can play through it um, you could also use this in your own blog posts or share it wherever you'd like okay so now that brings me to some new options that we've added to the simulator so there's this new show options pane here and I think the most useful one here is the show between lines checkbox under back plot. So this back plot can get very busy if you have a very long program. Um, and generally when you're debugging, you, you probably want to debug a particular toolpath. Um, and so now you have the freedom to only show the part of the back plot between these two lines. And so you can scroll to a particular part in your program and click this button to populate, take the current line and put it in there, and then scroll to another line and put the other one here, and it'll isolate the back plot to just between those two lines. Um, and then in addition to that, if this checkbox is checked, it allocates the entire playback bar here to just between those two lines. So on a long running program where this would, might have just been a sliver of this whole bar, it's hard to scrub through it. But now we can very easily just look through the part we care about. And so these 
line numbers might be a pain. Uh, I know a lot of these tool paths can be thousands of lines. Um, so we have some helpers here. So there's these two buttons now on the playback bar, next tool path, previous tool path. And those actually look for these comment lines in your G code, which most post processors will stick in there. And so we can just jump to the next tool path and find the one we care about. And it automatically sets the lines correctly. And then we can play through it. Okay, we just press play. We can scrub through it by dragging that playback bar. Now, if you get to the end, it will continue to play through the program and go on to the next toolpath, in which case, you can click this button and it'll change those numbers again. Or if you're done looking at that one tool path, you can reset the whole thing and it'll just put it back to the beginning and end of the program. So next we have show time window, which can be handy to just isolate. It doesn't matter where we are in the program. It just shows plus or minus some number of seconds, whatever is typed into this box here. So right now, by default, it's ten, plus or minus 10 seconds. So as we play through it, our back plot disappears and more shows up. So you always have this window. And then you can even, you can cut that in half by just showing the past. Let's go to a different one here. This just shows what was before the current time. Or we can just show what's to come and we'll catch up. And these can be used in combination with show between lines too. So then that brings us to the colors. So we have white by default for feed rate moves this dark blue, which can be harder to read for rapid movements. Uh, and so you can just click this and change it to any color you'd like. And finally, this last option for the back plot is this plot offset. And by default, it's set to zero. And you can see this toolpath right here is right on the surface of this model. And so in some places, the model is in front, and some places, the toolpath is in front. Uh, and that's just because that represents where the tip of our tool is, and so we're, we're creating that surface. Um, but this offset allows us, if we want to see that tool path in front, we can just put a small number here, so one thousandth of an inch. Um, if your program's in millimeters, you can type it in millimeters. Um, but now we can clearly see the whole tool path on top of that surface. You can also make it a bigger number um, if you wanted to visualize like a depth of cut, so like a tenth of an inch. you know your depth of cut in your program, you might input that number and verify that the toolpath looks like it's going that deep, something like that. But generally this can just be left at zero. All right, so now that brings us down to the model options. So just like in the previous versions of the simulator, we can turn the model on and off. Um, we now can specify our units of the model. So this model was in millimeters, so switching it to inches is just gonna make it enormous. Um, but if your model's in inches, you can now select that. Um, then there's this model parent option. And so now with kinetic control, we released TCPC. So our G5X offsets can be used to 
change where your part is. So let me load a different program here. So we have our Rook program, and I'll load the model for it as well. And you'll see it's very deep in our table here, so we're not actually going to be able to machine that. Uh, and that's because before we run this program, we probe our part and to get the origin of our G5X offset. And so in your summary tab here, you can scroll down, and this is where you can change your G5X offset. So after you probe your part on the machine, you could enter those values here, whatever they may be. I'm just going to put two inches here for Y, and that brings it up into a place that we can actually machine it. And you can see the model went with it because it's parented to this G5X offset. If our model was exported with the origin of the part at the origin of uh, the center of the rotation of our machine, then we can check this box and it would, it would move it to there. So you have to make sure when you export your model that the origin of the part is the same origin of your setup um, that's generating your toolpaths. Um, if you want to be able to, out of the box, use this first option. But generally, that's easier than finding the center of rotation of your machine. Um, alternatively, you can set a completely different model um, or different offset um, if you happen to know a different value. So if it happened to be an inch higher, um, that would work. But yeah. And then the model can also, the color of the model can also be changed. So we can do that. And finally, we have camera options. Um, so we, for a while, we've had the option to change between perspective and orthographic. But now by default, there's an auto mode, and it automatically transitions into orthographic when you're aligned with any of these front left, top, bottom views. And then when you rotate out, it automatically transitions. And all of these transitions are very smooth. Uh, there's, there's a bit of a delay. You can see it animate over. Um, that helps keep context of your scene, so it's a little more intuitive. Um, you can turn that off, so then it's much snappier, much faster, immediate. If you click one of these boxes, it will transition immediately. Um, and you, you'll want that immediate transition if you're parented to a moving object on the part or on the, pro, on the machine. So here we can change the parent of what the camera is looking at. So I find it's very helpful to parent to the tool. That's usually what you're looking at is the behavior of the tool. Um, and since it's animating here, if this was a smooth transition, we would always be a little bit behind what the tool is actually doing. But if we uncheck it, we're always aligned with what's going on in the program. So you'll notice that delay if we slow down the transition, um, speed up the program. Um, I guess we're not changing directions enough to really see. Let's, uh, let's go to a different part of the program. Stays with it. All right, so those are all the new options in new version 0 0.8.0. 0. Um, let us know what options you would like to see in the future.